Okay, we're gonna wait for it to start. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. We recognize these lyrics, right? We sang them for decades. You know, it amazes me how much good is being done by people in this community, both informally and through local, national, and international organizations in the name of peace and love. The question I ask you though, even in spite of that, is are we there yet, right? Who among us hasn't asked that when you're in the car trying to get somewhere, but are we there yet? Look around folks, Ukraine, South Sudan, Yemen, Syria, Ethiopia, Myanmar, the United States. I could go on, but it's hot and I won't. It's time we realize peace is not a standalone issue. The crises we face, militarism, sexism, racism, ecological disasters, and poverty are interlocking and complex. We just heard today's gospel. Peace is a gift Jesus gives us. And the spirit reminds us that he's with us and helps us understand how to love like Jesus. How do we live peace? Today, I will highlight two people who work each day to bring about peace through reflection and transformation. The first is a member of this community who shall remain anonymous, who posed this question to me earlier this week. Why do we resist peace within ourselves? Why do we resist peace within ourselves? And then went on to say, I'm grateful my father taught me that peace begins with me. When anger and hate bubble up, when I am frustrated that people don't appear to be hearing me, I know I have to find a way to see the love. I need to work through my life experiences that block me from loving in particular situations. If I judge, I'm adding to the hate and the haters. It's non-negotiable for me. I work on this constantly. To me, this person articulated one tangible way to intentionally let peace begin with them. In theory, this might seem obvious and even easy, but in practice, living this unrelenting peace in our current environment is almost impossible. However, we cannot let that stop us from trying. The second person I wanna highlight is Maureen O'Connell. She is an associate professor and chair of the Department of Religion and Theology at LaSalle University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 
Anybody know her? Okay, so we have numbers of people here in Drexel Hill who know, know her. In her recently published book, Undoing the Knots, Five Generations of American Catholic Anti-Blackness, Maureen describes her journey from doing good and giving back to beginning to dismantle the white Catholic identity and the economic and social structures it has erected and protected. Anybody read her book, Undoing the Knots? Me neither, but I saw a review and it's on my list now. Emma McDonald, who is a doctoral candidate in theological ethics at Boston College, reviewed the book in the May issue of the magazine Commonweal. And McDonald writes, all these Irish names, O'Connell, McDonald, mm, right? So McDonald writes, O'Connell retraces her family's history in the United States, specifically in Catholic Philadelphia, to uncover how her family's identity as Irish immigrant Catholics became entangled with whiteness and anti-Blackness over the course of centuries, such that her own Catholic identity remains knotted up with racism today. And McDonald goes on to share O'Connell's two revelations. The first, that whiteness is part of the tradition of American Catholicism. In other words, what it means to be white and what it means to be Catholic are handed down together from one generation to the next through ritual, practice, and teaching. O'Connell's second revelation is that traditions are constantly evolving. And as a result, she recommends starting with truth telling. O'Connell herself is honest about the pain and discomfort she experiences in discovering her own relatives, biases and blind spots, as well as their participation in genocide and the exploitation of black people. Identifying as white helped newly arrived Irish Catholics confront anti-Catholic sentiment in the US. In the 20th century, for example, Irish Catholics used minstrel shows to create a racial boundary between themselves and black Americans. Anybody here have that experience growing up? Raise your hands, folks. So proud. Um, In her research, O'Connell learns that both her mother and her uncle participated in a Catholic blackface minstrel show, a form of entertainment that was standard fare for Irish Catholics, probably for many Catholic families in the 50s. When I read this, a couple of days ago to my husband, who is part of my editorial team. And um, he said, oh, I remember that as a child. And being selected as the blackface character was an honor in the parish. Participants weren't even conscious they were perpetuating a negative stereotype. 
The practice of blackface minstrelsy cultivated a twisted version of solidarity, connecting white people with each other via shared ridicule of black people. And it's these kinds of traditions that O'Connell wants to scrutinize so that white Catholics can recognize how Catholic traditions and practices have been used to communicate and pass down the myth of black inferiority. Parish boundaries drawn to separate people by race, zoning laws, hiring practices, and school policies further isolated people of different racial backgrounds, reinforcing the myth that black people were somehow less like the divine and maybe even less human. By mourning the past, O'Connell introduces the virtue that she hopes can transform how white Catholics confront racism. Racial, R-A-C-I-A-L, mercy. Drawing, drawing on the work of moral theologian and Jesuit James Keenan, O'Connell defines racial mercy as a willingness to enter into the chaos of racism. Anyone interested in reading the book? So I wanna wrap up today with a quote from Argentinian human rights activist, artist, and community organizer, Perez Esquivel. We know that peace is only possible when it is the fruit of justice. True peace is the result of the profound transformation affected by nonviolence which is indeed the power of love. Peace, transformation, love. How do you live it? <laughs>